Okay, now we're ready to do the, uh, re the removal and replacement of the capacitors on the power supply board. Uh, we're going to be removing and replacing seven capacitors. Uh, it's the one in this cluster here. Um, easiest way to do that is just take your board, take your soldering iron, you heat up one of the legs of the capacitor, you tilt the capacitor on the other side of the board till that leg pulls through the board, you go to the next leg, and you pull it through, and then you remove the capacitor. Uh, you do the same thing as you move around the board, uh, heating up one leg, pulling it through, heating up the other leg. Sometimes you may have to move it in and out of the board a couple of times to get the capacitor legs free from the board, um, but I said it's basically the same procedure. You heat up, you tilt, you heat up, you tilt till it pulls free. At this point, we don't need to worry about the solder that's on the board. We're going to be using our desolder wick to remove that in just a few moments. We'll be replacing seven capacitors on this board. One left. This one's in a tight spot. Okay, we've got it out. Okay, now to remove the solder, we just take our solder braid, you put it over the top of the solder, heat it with your soldering iron. The excess solder will be wicked up into the braid, and then you'll be left with a clean um, space to insert your new replacement capacitor. So we just work our way around the board. It is a very simple process if you have a good quality soldering iron um, and you know, the, the, the desolder wick to be able to remove uh, the solder out of the holes. We're just looking through it to make sure that the holes are good and clean. I have one hole left right here. Okay, let's see, one left right here. Okay, now we have a board with the capacitors removed. Now we need to start populating it with our new capacitors. Um, on the capacitors, one side will have a gray stripe and a negative sign. That is the negative terminal of the capacitor. On the board, the negative side is going to be shaded. The positive side sometimes does have the positive mark. Uh, you can also tell by the length of the leads on the capacitor the longer lead is the positive side, the short lead is the negative side. So we'll just repopulate our board. I so do need to make sure that you put them in with the correct polarity because if you don't, as soon as you power it up, it will blow the capacitors out and you'll have to start back over. What I'm doing on the back side is that as I'm inserting the capacitors, I am uh, separating the leads out so that the capacitors will stay in the board until we're ready to do the soldering. And so you just work your way around through the capacitors one by one.
Okay, now that we have all seven replaced on the board, um, now we're ready to do the soldering. Take your lead-free solder and your soldering iron. Apply the soldering iron tip to the contact. Give it a second or so to heat up, then you apply the solder. You want to make sure that your solder connection is a good shiny joint. If it looks dull, then it is what is called a cold solder joint, and you need to redo it until it gets to have a nice shiny color to it, shiny metallic. It doesn't take very much solder. All seven capacitors, probably less than an inch of solder. So you don't want to put too much on it, just enough to make the contact. Okay. The last thing to do is take your diagonal cutters and cut off the excess leads off of the back of the board so that it will go back into the mount. And you just cut them off right down to the top of the solder. And there you are. One repaired power supply board. Um, let's take it back over to the monitor, test it out, and see how we came out.